1969, Arthur C. Clarke hikes Adams Peak, a Sri Lankan mountain sacred to Buddhists, Muslims, and Christians alike. A four-mile flight of twisting steps beckons hikers on a spiritual journey to the summit. Atop this sacred peak, Clark has an epiphany. He imagines a method for humanity to ascend and colonize the universe. A cable stretching into the infinite beyond. Clark's vision takes shape in a novel that nets him one of the highest honors in science fiction, the Hugo Award. Arthur C. Clarke in Fountains of Paradise talked about a cable that would take you into heaven, like Jack and the Beanstalk. Well, believe it or not, it is physically possible to build an elevator into outer space. What you do is you put a big space station in a Clark orbit, a geosynchronous orbit. The thing is orbiting at the same speed that the Earth rotates, so that it's always above the same spot on Earth. The top floor of the elevator will be the satellite, 22,000 miles up. Centrifugal force allows the satellite to support the cable connecting it to the ground. Clark theorizes that space elevators will be essential if humanity is to migrate to the stars. From now on, there'll always be somebody in space, and then more and more men will occupy space. The space elevator, a single one perhaps first, and then eventually the Earth will be the hub of a wheel uh, with spokes going out, the elevators, and probably more people living outside the Earth than on it. Clark believed that the rocket was to space travel as the balloon was to aviation. He thought rockets were a completely outdated and outmoded means of transportation almost from the time they were invented. To take a pound of anything around us and put it into near-Earth orbit costs about $10,000. However, with a space elevator, we may be able to drop that cost perhaps down by a factor of 100. A space elevator can launch spacecraft from beyond the pull of Earth's gravity and deeper into the cosmos. Easier access to the heavens means lifting mankind closer to Clark's dream of interstellar colonization. People want to explore the far, far, far frontier beyond our solar system. I think cheap access to space will allow all of that to happen. As a NASA researcher in the early 2000s, Michael Lane studied the feasibility of space elevators. Lane was so intrigued by the concept that he has spent the past decade independently designing and testing equipment that could someday power a real space elevator. I'm committed to building an elevator space because once I saw it, that was it. To construct a space elevator, engineers must first solve two technical challenges. The first, how to power the elevator cab during its long ascent without heavy cables or onboard fuel. We would beam power from a large laser array on the ground to solar receivers on the lifter climbing into space. Second, the cable must be very light, yet strong enough that it doesn't snap. In the Fountains of Paradise, Clark solves this problem with an imaginary carbon-based filament made of diamonds. Clark predicted a supermaterial, what we now call carbon nanotubes. What makes them important is both their structure and their strength. Nanotubes grown in the lab look very promising, but then we have to mass produce them at a level that can support a 100,000 kilometer elevator to space. For now, Lane tests his theories with models. So this is our bot. It, uh, it's a mock-up of what an eventual space elevator could become. You've got a tread system, so the tread will actually grip the ribbon between the tread, and as the rollers spin, you'll climb. At this scale, Lane's elevator cab has room for only one passenger. This is our mascot, and his name is Clark. We named him Clark from the very first time in honor of Arthur, Arthur C. Clark. 
Lane and his team are about to put their tiny prototype to the test. Five, four, three, two, one. It's a long way from this climbing bot to an actual space elevator, but Lane aims to build on the foundation laid by Arthur C. Clarke, and he's not alone. There's more than 60 universities in the United States working on this project. There's a very large, active community getting this thing built. Lane and others are taking up Clark's torch to achieve a goal that Fountains of Paradise portrays as essential to the growth of humanity. <laughs> 